People ask all the time, how much money can I actually make if I learn investing now, if I start trading now? And because we just did a challenge, I think now is a good time to kind of show you hypotheticals and potential value, dollar values, right? And these are approximations of what you could actually earn. Welcome back real quick to the channel. Of course, I have to start with a disclaimer that just says everything we discuss on this call is for finance, educational purposes only, not to be considered legal or financial or investing advice. You guys know the drill over and over again. So as you guys know, we recently just finished our six figure trading coach challenge, right? All that we're doing really is we're taking community entries within our community. And of course, the team members are also posting screenshots of trades that they have taken just to kind of show and have some oversight on those trades, have some feedback on those trades and kind of go over things together as a community. Winner gets thousand dollars, et cetera, so forth. Great opportunity, great team building exercise. And of course you walk away with some free cash or free goodies, but that was not the point. So yes, we did that. We've got a couple of funded account passing people. We've got a couple of people who have been able to accomplish their next steps independent, meaning aside from me, aside from somebody else doing it and all the darn people in the world who are like, Hey, give me five grand and I'll pass your prop from challenge. They're doing it for themselves. They're gaining the skill to change their own life. But I digress. Didn't mean to go down that rabbit hole in that time period. Okay. I personally took only 42 trades live about two classes a week. That's where those trades are coming from. That's not including the four hour YouTube stuff that we do or the public stuff, but the community as a whole took 72. So I have this up intentionally because I wanted to show what these 72 trades, okay, that the team, okay, independent of me, all took could actually equal. Okay, so if you took 72 trades, what's that equal with what dollar amount with whatever? To give you an idea, we get asked all the time, well, how much do you need to start investing, right? I'm going to start and go kind of all over the place, but I'm going to start here at 500. Before I even go any further, I'm going to say $500 is not a lot if you're truly considering becoming an investor, right? Trading is almost a dirty word depending on the community you're in. Forex, foreign exchange, futures, you know, the crypto, everyone's got an opinion, binary options. There's so many different things. Stocks, no matter how you phrase this, you're still an investor. You're still investing money into the markets of some kind, whether that be in currencies or stocks or equities or what have you. You're investing money with the intention of compounding that money. So no matter how you look at it, you are an investor. So $500 one time is not a lot, right? It's not a whole, whole bunch, you know, in the big picture, but let's say you're starting small and that's all that you're doing with $500. It's not impossible. $500. You still have options, $500 and take a look $500 at a 5% per trade. Now remember that's, that's very high risk. Okay. That's using typically speaking leveraged money, definite leverage of, you know, more than 101, preferably if you're doing 5% per risk you're probably looking somewhere at 300 or 500 to one leverage as a bare minimum. Otherwise you shouldn't be that high and you shouldn't be that low on an investment either, but we're just doing hypotheticals for a second of what does it really take to make some money? So remember this right here is a Monte Carlo stimulation. So it'll spit out numbers anywhere from like 70% accuracy to 90% accuracy based off of your wins and losses falling in random locations. That's what the simulation does. And we'll go over to it live here in just a second, but I wanted to pinpoint this out stable and, and unaltered for just a second. At about a 1.75 to 1 win to loss ratio, that means you're winning almost two times as much as you're losing when you lose with approximately an 85% win rate, risking 5% per trade. Mind you, you can find more than one trade in a day. You don't have to, and it doesn't mean you should. Overtrading is a great recipe for a disaster. But at these metrics, your potential gain in however long it takes you to get 72 trades, and in this case of the traders, it took about six weeks, give you an idea. That's $26,000. That's what your ending balance is. So that's not including the 500 that you invested as well. So that's not a bad way to be, you know, the total gain, definitely not bad. That's in a couple of weeks time. Now, mind you, this is a simulation and we're going to go over quite a few. So just bear with me. The next one I did is a thousand dollars, way more practical, still keeping it at 5%, but take a look at that potential ending balance. Notice this is also still sitting at 1.75 to one. My opinion is bare minimum as you're trailing, scaling, and protecting your trades. And I'm a big advocate of managing is how you make money. Like people who don't manage well don't end up making money. Um, that's my two cents. Doesn't mean I'm the only way to be. It's not the only way to think. It's just my personal belief, right? 
Needless to say, 1.75 to 1 is pretty good. So for you to average that consistently over a basket of 72 trades this is kind of high. I think a lot of people fall closer to the 1 to 1, 1 1.5 to 1. I'm talking after all of their considerations, the things that they don't air on YouTube, like when they scaled, when they trailed, if they locked and got knocked out, I'm talking the whole basket. So 1.75 to 1 is still on the high end. 85% accuracy, I think, is more than reasonable. More than reasonable. Still risking 5%, which is quite high. This is aggressive. This is really aggressive, and you need leveraged money to be able to do so. You're looking at a potential gain of about $53,000, not including the $1,000 you put in. It's about $52,000, right? Again, in however long it takes you to get 72 trades. Mind you, if you're on the smaller time frames, that might be you take a couple of trades in a day, a couple of weeks. If you're on the larger time frames, it might be you take two or three trades in a week. So this will take you six months. It all depends on you, right? And it depends on how much you're bringing to the table. It depends on the things that you're doing. It depends on the amount of risk you're having. But let's go a little bit further. And then we'll pull, pull up the actual spreadsheet here. $5,000, I feel like, is a lot more practical if you want to call yourself an investor. Um, people all the time are buying prop firm challenges and they're they're investing in so many things. We spend money on McDonald's. Hopefully not McDonald's. That crap is toxic. But we spend money on eating out. We spend money all the time on things that we think are important to us. But something like this, this is an investment into your future. So most people have the potential to get that kind of money, but they don't necessarily use it for those kinds of things and or they blow it. So 5000 to me is a reasonable amount to start learning to trade and invest with, especially when you're trying to do anything a little bit on the heavier side, heavy, high risk stuff. Remember, 5% is still very hefty. That is a very aggressive, very, very aggressive. And you better know what you're doing if you're going all the way to 5%. 85% accuracy. Notice how the first thing I did here was move it down to a 1.5 to 1. At the end of a basket, so for example, this trade might equal this one you averaged a 2 to 1. This one you got your 1.75 to 1. Maybe this one you locked it too quickly and you kind of got barely that 1.25 to 1. At the end, that's what you averaged over 72 trades. So it doesn't mean every trade had to exactly be that. So I lowered that a little bit to kind of come more into the normal range where I think a lot of traders should be aspiring to fall to and or you know should be trading toward. Is 1.5 to 1 is a great risk to reward. It's something you can consistently do and you can maintain a healthy stop loss. You don't have to choke your trade by saying, hey, I got a two pip stop loss. Woohoo. Market sneezes and knocks you out even when you're right anyways. Hate that stuff. But check this out. That's over six figures. Again, in how long? However long it takes you to get 72 trades. If you're on a baby time frame, you might take three to five trades in a day. So you guys can do the math. That's a couple of weeks. If you're on the one hour time frame, you might take one or two a day or you might even be taking four or five a week. So do the math. How many weeks is it going to take you? Mind you, there's fees in all of this. There's other aspects. This is not going to be, well, she said this and it has to equal exactly this. That's not the case. Every pair you trade has a slightly different value. If it's not a US dollar pair, it's typically worth less than $10 or more than $10 per pip to kind of give you an idea. But risk is risk. So if you're risking the same amount on Euro JPY, which is worth X, as you are on, you know, German 30 or now German 30, 40, I should say. Although there were substantially different amounts, 5% risk on one is still 5% risk on the other. So kind of washes out. But there are broker fees, spreads, commissions, swaps, and other things to consider. Fees on the way in. Now, this isn't the sexy part of the industry, but you got fees for the deposit of crypto. You got fees on the way out. You got taxes. But still, you guys get the idea. So not a bad way to be at all. Last one that I kind of pre-did in advance is $5,000, 3% risk, which is again still high. That's still very high. This is definitely moderately high, aggressive in, in how I would define it personally. 85% accuracy, only a 1.5 to 1. You're still looking at averaging about that 85%, about $39,000, okay? That is not a bad way to be. Figure after everything is said and done in however many weeks this takes you in a pretty practical way, right? I mean, reasonably practical. You still are going to be walking away with better than, you know, $30,000, give or take. Not a bad way to be. So for everyone who's asked me how long this takes, what do I need? What do I need to learn? Well, obviously you need your strategy. Obviously you need your management. And obviously you need to be able to hone in on that. A lot of people start trading and they think they are following the same rules and reasons for entry and they're managing the same way. But if you analyze it and fact check yourself a little bit, you find out that you kind of took this trade willy-nilly and this trade willy-nilly and that you're not actually following any kind of systematic approach in how you enter and how you manage. And then your basket of, say, 72 trades isn't any information. There's no data in it. It's just sporadic and gambly. It's There's no info there. 
So the, step one, stick with your strategy, you know, your management, hone in on that lot size that's based off of risk and not just, hey, I trade 0.5, you know, for my, you know, $10,000 account. Don't do that. That's not a great way to be. And then from there, you take all that data. You can honestly accomplish something like this. Super recommend starting in a demo if you have not done already. It doesn't cost you anything. You can do it live from our YouTube calls. You can do it on your own analysis, but give it a try. Give yourself six months and see where you land. Before I hop off here, one of the guys inside of our community, he has a brand new FTMO challenge. This is how much he's made in the last week or so through the community in which he's in here. So not a bad day. This is literally less than a week. Don't quote me. We'll say a week or two. I'm not exactly sure how many. I think since Monday and today's Thursday. Uh, but that's kind of awesome. All really, really simple, duplicatable. No, not all of these screenshots were perfect. There were red in between. Of course, there was drawdown. That's real trading, but this was the final result of what he has so far. Before I hop off, I want to show you just one more time what this Monte Carlo spreadsheet actually looks like and what it actively does. So remember, to kind of give you an idea, if your investing balance is $10,000 and you're risking 2% per trade with an average accuracy of about 85%, 1.5 to 1 win to loss ratio. So you're winning 150%, you know, of what you're losing, right? Here you go. Averaging 91 in this case, your ending balance is about 48,000. And you can do this over and over again. So if I hit down here and I just hit F9, it kind of recalculates it. So you see that if you pay attention to this over here, all this is doing is making your wins and losses fall in randomized spots. So you keep watching there and I'm going to do this. So you can see how the losses kind of move around. Sometimes they're all patched together. Sometimes they're all at the end. If they're at the end, you're going to lose, you know, that biggest chunk of profit. If they're at the beginning, you can kind of recover as long as your risk isn't too high and your win to loss ratio is good. So just to kind of show you what this actively does. And on this principle, you don't need to be perfect. Okay. Using something like this and staying the course. Yes. You need to have a consistent methodology. Otherwise you don't have any data to go off of. If you're trading with various management styles and various strategies and various reasons to enter and various lot sizes, all you have is a bunch of variants and no data. And then you're going to have some weeks where you made some money and some weeks where you didn't. And then you think that investing is hard. You think trading is hard. It's not. It's just duplication and simplicity over and over and over and over again. So for most people, I know they're not all putting in 10,000, although we have people in our group who literally put in, you know, quarter of a million of their own cash. Not everybody, obviously. Some people are playing with that, you know, smaller thousand dollars. The hardest part in trading is when this is your starting balance and you're only risking 2%, please notice that your win is only $30. It's not sexy. It's not, oh my gosh, I'm going to go buy a Maserati. If your investment is $1,000 at a 2% risk, you made $30 on that first trade if you won. Okay? If you won, you made 30. On that second one, you made $30.90. <laughs> Woohoo, right? This isn't a lot. And the hard part is a lot of people are starting with $500. I think a gentleman by the name of Scott, he's a developer of cool trading tools. He mentioned something in our class this morning. There was a guy who came on and he was talking about the that same spreadsheet I just showed you, that same screenshot. He had made this much in the last seven days, right? He was part of the my Forex funds that went under. Of course, you have no control over that. But, and that's a big but, he has the skill. So needless to say, Scott comes in and he starts talking about how when people see this $16, they're discouraged. And then, of course, they start to gamble. They start to over-risk, over-leverage. They make poor decisions. But on a $500 account, $15 is 3%. That is not bad. That is not a bad win. But you're doing this over the big picture. And once you have that first balance, you can withdraw some. You can pay yourself first, pay back your original investment, keep $1,000 in there, do it again right? So now you've maybe paid off a small credit card. You've taken out your original investment. You've kept a thousand dollars in there. What have you? Cool. And you can do it again. And that's only at 2% risk. As your skill increases, sure, you can bump this up to five. That's still pretty aggressive. This is very, very aggressive. You better know you've got the high 80s and 90% accuracy. You have to know that or you should not be anywhere near 5%. There's just too many other variables involved that make it super practical. But that's my humble opinion. So $1,000, 5% risk, averaging 85% accuracy ratio, only 1.5 to 1, which remember, some people are trading a 3 to 1. That's huge, huh? Now, granted, this, I think, is harder to get in the ebb and flow of the market consistently over and over again with lots and lots of entries. People do it, 
But I'm talking about the basket of 72 trades, not the two out of the 72 trades, right? But to kind of give you an idea, as your skill set improves, you have lots of ways to improve this number. But you got to start with where you are. And where you are might be here. If it is here, your risk should be low. Your risk should not be going up until either your accuracy is going up or your average win size is going up. But that's that. So it was a perfect time to make a short video on answering some of the questions we get on YouTube of, okay, I love what I'm seeing. I've been practicing on a demo. It is a little bit possible, although I don't know what I'm doing. We've had a few people take those four hour trade ideas, all free on the public kind of YouTube community and said, hey, wait a minute, my account is up and maybe it is paper trading. That's totally okay. But they're concerned with where do you start, how much money it takes, how long does it take to learn. Your learning curve is going to be 100% up to you. I don't get to decide that. Your investment level is going to be up to you. But all I can say is if you start, whether that is within my community on YouTube learning, kind of whether it's through any of those companies that are floating around, it doesn't matter. Pick somewhere that you find a community that you feel like can be supportive and that can kind of help guide you through your journey. And it's going to be a long one because even once you make the money, there's still much to learn, right? But either way, pick the community and then just stick with it. So hopefully this video was helpful for you seeing what's possible in 72 trades. So 72 trades can equal quite a bit of money, right? It might be the difference in that 40,000, 10,000, 4,000. At the end of the day, don't know. It's going to be completely up to what your results are, how much you need to invest. You can technically trade with a pretty small amount of money, although I don't think it's duplicatable long term. And I think you should not be undercapitalized if you want to be profitable long term. But there you go. So happy trading. I hope this video finds you well. I hope you have an awesome week. Take care and God bless.